And we're live. Welcome to the Lakers Late Night Podcast. I am Anthony Irwin. Uh, honestly, I have no idea how we're going to get through this. Such an incredible, emotional, taxing, exhausting, but thrilling night uh, tonight taking place to end this horrid Lakers season and <laughs> just an, an, an icon. Uh, a, a star was put out tonight, and and uh, it couldn't have gone out in a much better way, right, Harrison? Mamba out, man. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't even know what to. My number one, I can't believe he actually said that. Number two, I can't believe he just did that. I mean, it, it's like you said right before we went on the air. If you sent in that ending to his career, send it back for rewrites. Right. It, and throughout the whole night, it was just a whole bunch of – I don't know if there has ever been a crazier night of Twitter, if you really think well, about it. When you when you take into account Twitter crashing, right? <laughs> Suck it, Kim Kardashian, <laughs> you know? Uh, and then the Lakers' official Twitter thing crashes. You know, their official Twitter account crashes. Um, and then by the end of it, the, the Golden State Warriors were going for actual NBA history tonight. They were they were they they beat a, a record that I didn't think would ever be beat. And they, they won their 73rd game. And at the end of the night, you go through the, the timeline right now, you look at everything that's being spoken about right now, and it is all Kobe. And uh, all, you know, all the curmudgeons all throughout the day who were saying, you know, how. The, the, I still the, saw people saying good riddance during the fourth quarter. It's right. like, get over it. Like, don't watch then. Don't watch. Don't pay attention. Log off Twitter. Go do something else. People are allowed to appreciate a guy who gave them 20 years of his life, try, just, like, just trying to win. He, he, he scored 60 points. Was it? Did he finish? It was sixty that he finished with, or sixty-one. I'm it sorry. Just showed, it just showed. It just showed uh, sixty on there. And I, 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 I lost track there at the end. What with all the you know explosion of computers and like just breaking right. of the internet. Uh, I mean, I, it, it was just it was unbelievable. It's it's like it's like you said. If we would have if if sixty you know, points, if Disney would have written the script to that. <laughs> people would have said it was unrealistic. It, you just, there's no way that anybody could have predicted this. And uh, in true Kobe fashion, and I think this is what um, he's, he's, should be up at the top of the list of things that Kobe should get remembered for, is his understanding of the moment uh, and his accepting of the moment and his reaction and, and desire to live up to that moment. I, there's tonight was incredible. Tonight was insane, and and on top of everything, the Lakers won. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I guess for him that probably means something to go out on a win, right? But it was just like it was all at the end. There, it was almost like the result was immaterial. There were people with four minutes left saying that you know the Lakers just need to get him to fifty and get him out of the game, and then all of a sudden he goes on a thirteen zero run by himself. It's just you can't make this stuff up. He, even the refs, I think, were mesmerized. Like on that last <laughs> inbound play, he two hand shoved Gordon Hayward in the throat and got away with it, like oh, right in the, front of the baseline. The poor Jazz couldn't get a call at the end of the night. <laughs> yeah, they Gordon, Gordon Hayward's like looking over at the ref, like you see, he's like, like what are you going to do if he pulls a knife? Are you going to call anything <laughs> then? Like, well, it's like, did, did you? I don't know if we said this on the air, but yesterday we definitely brought up like how fun would it be if. Kobe just started screaming at the refs to challenge them to go ahead, try to take me out. And tonight yeah. it was like, tonight it was literally go ahead, try to, to try to call a foul on some of these plays. <laughs> I don't anything. I, it was like the kid that like knew it was a senior in high school that knew it was the last day of school. And uh, was, it just knew that there was nothing the teachers could do at that point. Like, what were they going to do? Do you, do you, can you imagine if they would have thrown him out of his final game? Like, I was half expecting him. I don't know if you saw on Instagram earlier, but Mo Williams tweeted a picture of a time that Kobe brought, Kobe accidentally accidentally kicked him in the head. And uh, 
<laughs> and it said like hashtag Mamba Day, like he just thought it was funny. And I, I was half wondering if Kobe was going to try and get away with that tonight. And just like it, just he was out there, like just like bam, just kicking guys and creating space and trying to like because he probably could have gotten away with it. Yeah, it was, I there was like nothing that just, he could do no wrong tonight. I, I don't even how many fouls did he finish with? It couldn't have been many. Uh, one or two. I'm looking here. Kobe had and one foul. One foul. <laughs> one foul. And right. If I remember correctly, it was an intentional one. So. Right. It, it's it was it's somewhat incredible that that, that uh, the amounts of people NBA legends like I'm looking on the TV right now. James Worthy is talking to you know is talking with Gary Payton uh, about Kobe Bryant, and this guy is is a legend among legends. And 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 all the NBA stars and all the actual stars flee. Did the you know did the uh, Star Spangled Banner tonight? Actual legitimate superstars look at Kobe in actual awe. And tonight, you know, does when it Kobe, ruin the night if I say that Flea's national anthem was one of the worst things I've ever seen? Like, I didn't I didn't mind it. it I didn't think it was that bad. Derek Fisher's lit. I think he's been drunk ever since he got fired. But he. <laughs> <laughs> people on itunes i just moved my head fully off screen that's how that's how much i wanted to disassociate myself from that joke that he just made <laughs> but i he just look at all these people shaq was here and shaq was I, they, they showed the uh they showed shaq on the sideline when when kobe got to the 60th point and the amount of salt, man. Paula Dean would have been offended by the amount of salt running across Shaq's face in that exact moment. I love well, poor Shaq. He left his last game. I'm pretty sure he. Uh, what did he do? He he messed up his knee, right? In his last game or something like that, and like he had to get carted off with the freaking Celtics. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't get. I mean, some part of it. Like I think as a human being, it would be hard to not be a little bit jealous of how Kobe got to go out. Right, especially given the rivalry between those two guys, like Shaq yeah, was saying think, all night. Uh, Shaq was saying all night facetiously, uh, "Go ahead, get 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 fifty, Kobe," because he, you know, he didn't honestly think he was going to get it. Hell, I tweeted out that if Kobe gets to fifty, Twitter might break again, right? And uh, I, I I said that somewhat facetiously. Tonight, when it actually happened, I mean. My my Twitter was 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 a you know could have was the matrix <laughs> you know it was those green lines that just go down on on TweetDeck here because of the of the uh, reactions to this it, it was insane and again what I come back to is Kobe's accepting of the challenge of meeting that moment and and I think that's you know I wrote the article that I did today for for uh, Forum Blue and Gold. But I think at the end of the day, this is what I'm going to, you know, miss him most for, is that he was he, – he's just – I don't know of any NBA player ever who would have gone out the way Kobe went out tonight. Yeah, I mean, hey, he said that for his second act, he wants to tell stories. He got a hell of a start tonight. Yeah, I even, you know – I don't think people realize how hard it is. Like people are going to say, "Oh, well, anybody could shoot fifty times and score sixty points, right?" Like I can, I guarantee you, articles like that and tweets like that are already being sent, right? Oh yeah, we're getting the the well actuallys are in the drafts right now. They're getting worked on, right? But uh, scoring thirty points in an NBA game is insane. Scoring forty points in an NBA game is insane. Scoring 60 in the final game of a 20-year career, and a 20-year career that is as taxing as any career has ever been, right? When you consider both on- and off-court stuff, and this guy being the face of, of the biggest franchise or the, the most known, the best-known franchise in all of uh, professional basketball, if not all of American sport, right? This guy has been the dude, uh... And he ends it like this. I'm speechless. I, I'm an English major. I'm paid to talk, and I'm effing speechless. 
<laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's just, it's incredible. Uh, it, it, we've said it a couple times. Uh, I'll, I'll say it again. You just, you couldn't have written it better. Right. Uh, all right. So I, I do have a, a minor qualm with, with the game. Other than right. Flea's National Anthem? Sorry, Flea. <laughs> I actually liked it. I don't know what you're I, talking about. I did not. <laughs> I'll be nice. But, I'm, I'm sure you're good at other music. I, I, uh, my, my minor qualm with the game, and it's a, and it's a, it's a small one, and it's picking nits. I'll admit to that. But by the way, guys, guys, this is at Anthony Irwin LA on Twitter. At Anthony Irwin LA, he's got a minor qualm. People, people will joke or, or people will agree people will you know when they hear this they'll agree uh of everybody on the lakers roster um you know the of the current active lakers roster there is nobody there is nobody uh to whom tonight meant more uh obviously aside from kobe than meta world peace right those guys are actual you know you hear each you know you you hear those guys talk about each other and it's an actual brotherly relationship. And I thought, you know, with four seconds left and the game iced, we joked last night that they were going to sub in Ryan Keller, that Byron would sub in Ryan Kelly and not and not Meta World Peace. Like that's hey, a, by the way, Byron Scott, thanks for listening to the podcast. We appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that, Byron. But but isn't that isn't that you know, if there is a qualm to have about tonight, wouldn't that be it? That, that yeah, that, it's kind of, it's a little weird that Ryan Kelly was the guy that got sent in for him. <laughs> he, you have he had a timeout to think about it. He had you know if I'm if I'm meta, I I shove Ryan Kelly out of the way, you know, and make that happen. But uh, those guys they 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 fought against the Celtics together. They uh, somehow you know some. Metal World Peace worked his absolute tail off to get back into shape to be on this team in the first place, right? Meta could have easily just called it a career or, or kept on getting buckets in China, but he works his tail off and puts himself in this situation here. And Byron, again, uh, completely uh, focused on the Kobe angle to this, ignores what I think is is almost as important in, in the kind of moment that, that could have been shared there. And that, that was kind of unfortunate. Yeah. I, and you know, it, it is, but I think at the end of the day, I, I don't even know that meta is going to have that much of a problem with it. I mean, he's going to get his moments with Kobe. Now it would have been nice to see those two, the last remnants of the last time the Lakers were good on the court and hug it out. As Kobe comes out of the game, that would have been a really cool moment for sure. But even Meadow was saying before the game that if Byron tried to sub him in for Kobe, he would have waved him off and told him, no, Kobe's got to stay out there. We want him to score more. So <laughs> I think I think Meta is probably okay with it. But I do agree that it is a little weird that Ryan Kelly was the decision there. And that's to say nothing about – that's not to say anything about Ryan Kelly. It's just for something that symbolic, you'd like to see – like a meaningful sub, and I, I don't know that that was necessarily – unless Kobe and Ryan Kelly are incredibly close and we just don't know about <laughs> it. I mean, maybe they're best friends. We don't know. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll, we'll get back to um, – we'll get back to the, to the positive side of things. Obviously, it was a night of moments, right? And that could have been one that didn't happen, but uh, tonight was a night of moments. Was there one in particular that that either you know really tugged at your heartstrings or that you really think about now? Obviously, aside from the crazy, you know, Kobe got to fifty. Oh my God, he got to sixty. But the you know, the off court or the the minor things that really caught your eye. Um, I mean, it was the humanization of Kobe, seeing him hit that deep three 
where he was so tired, he was so damn tired that he ba- he basically pulled up for the three. I think it almost came off like just to end the possession uh, from the left wing in front of the Pacers be- or in front of the Jazz bench. Bench, excuse me. And he mm-hmm. hits the three. And if you look on the replay, it didn't even really look like he was looking at the basket when he shot. Like he just was so quick getting into it, he could barely get up off the ground. He's like basically limping back to the Lakers bench. Everybody's trying to jump all over him. He's just like horse blinders on headed straight from that he just like it it was like watching an uh, like an old person just like making a beeline for the first seat that they could find just to get like off their weary legs and it was just sad and it was like awesome at the same time that he was still able to hit the three and make that happen but it was just I, I guess if we're talking about moments that tugged at the heartstrings that was that was the one a little bit I think for me, it was anything having to do with Lamar Odom. Yeah, for me, that's it was true. before the game. Was, I, I, yeah. Well, because there was so there were three Lamar moments uh, in the game. It was you know in the pregame when they were doing when all the players were saying mm-hmm. the nice things about about uh, Kobe and and to Kobe about you know his incredible career, and then there was one that happened the, during the commercial that again you know when it comes up. Uh, you're just like, oh my god, you know, it's it's Lamar, and then finally, uh, there at the very end, uh, you know, Kobe is is meeting all the all the former Lakers, and it was really cool to see all the former. Like Eldon Campbell was there, Chris <laughs> was there, Adam Morrison was there. I think I saw Nick. I Van can't Eckel believe Ad, they brought Adam Morrison out. That's <laughs> just awesome. Uh, but but you know, Kobe gives that big hug to Lamar and they, and you know that it's playing on in, on the big screen there in Staples center and people see Lamar and, and a huge ovation uh, amongst an already sizable one breaks out. And for me, uh, and I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to not get emotional here. Uh, I'm already failing, but people don't realize how close we came to losing this guy. Right? Like people, people you were sitting- <laughs> We, we, had a, we had a show that night anticipating breaking news and terrible breaking news. We, we were sitting here in the preseason on this same podcast talking about Lamar. You, I remember it was you and me. When, as professional as we try to keep things, we, we were really, really dedicated fans for a long time. And we're still, you know, we're still very involved and invested in the team. And the two of us were almost in tears over this Lamar thing because, I, I mean, I, I don't I don't remember how I, – I believe he connected a lot for you, but he would – like him and Pow and, and – I mean, I, obviously I liked all of him, Pow, and Kobe when they all were on that team. But Lamar was probably the player that I connected the most with. He was the one that, you know, was the easiest to connect with and uh, on those teams. And you know, it, it's like you said, we we thought he was going to die that night. We, we were, based on all the reporting, it sounded like he had hours to live. And to see him back at Staples Center, twi- not once, but twice this year, hugging it out with Kobe in his final game is about as I, I uh, <laughs> Time Warner did perfect timing right there. He was actually, Lamar was actually talking in, a, in an interview there. And yeah, he, he, this guy went from... All right, we ant- we did that show and anticipated having to break the news to everybody either during the show, which would have been terrible, uh, or at least having a short form ready uh, for later that night if if uh, Lamar did pass that night. And then Lamar was in a coma for a good stretch, and there's still you know you still had that that you know article waiting on standby. Uh, in case the worst did happen. And now, uh, here we are months later, and the guy is up, he's walking, he's talking, and he's cognizant enough to be able to be able to enjoy this kind of moment. Uh, it's just that's that to me is, is, is what drives me towards sports. It's the stuff that it's the stuff off the court. That feels bigger than 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 the actual game. Uh, it you know the stories within the story. Tonight was a perfect example of that. Yeah. Uh, 
I wanted to talk really briefly, and we'll, we'll get out of here because I'm I'm barely holding it together. I can't lie. Uh, heading into this, uh, I I saw some I saw some. Uh, I mean, there, there was a bunch of salt. There was a lot of criticism going towards uh, 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 Kobe Bryant today and in, in, in the weeks leading up to in this season, really. It, the season was a joke for most of the season. Um, does this go – how far does this go? Because I know it makes – it has an impact, right? It has an actual impact on, on his image. But how far does this go in shifting some of that narrative back to this guy was just effing great? And this guy is one of the utmost entertainers that the NBA has ever seen. Not much. I don't, I don't think that anybody that was getting salty on Twitter today and complaining about the fact that people were celebrating Kobe is going to have their minds changed on a night when he scored 60 points on 50 shots. And uh, uh, so... You know, for them, it cements their idea that he's the quintessential gunner. He doesn't really care about, you know, uh, about team. Uh, I, don't, I don't think for people like that, I, I don't think it does anything to change their, their perception of Kobe. And I think for at the sa in the same way for Lakers fans, it reinforces that perception of he's a guy that, like you said, he always told these meaningful stories with his, his play. He made statements with his play. He showed up to play in the biggest games and in the biggest moments. And I think that both sides are going to find things that support their argument in this game, which was really the unique thing about Kobe throughout his career was that he, he was almost, he, he's a human Rorschach test in the same way that Allen Iverson was. People look at him and see different things and it, it, like everything that they can look at the same performance from Kobe and draw totally different conclusions from it for the most part. I'll, I would agree. I would agree to a certain extent. But what I did find interesting was, and I saw this from a bunch of people on Twitter. And I and and I don't, I won't mute or I won't unfollow people for disagreeing with me. I'm I'm not one of those guys. If I follow you, I'm generally going to stay. I'm I'm going to keep following you to you know for for perpetuity. Uh, yeah, you'll just talk about them in the in the DMs or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll talk shit, you know, privately, but every so often, or, or I'm not going anywhere for the most part. Uh, <laughs> but I did see, I did see a lot of people tweeting who I saw early on in the day, and I was getting kind of frustrated with. I saw that, you know, the 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 anti. Oh, why aren't we watching? Why aren't we talking about the 73 wins thing? I saw a lot of that, and then from those exact same people. I think uh, at Steve Enteris, uh Steve McPherson, who is a must follow. He's hilarious. One of the best Photoshoppers out there. Uh, a Wolves, a Wolves Twitter guy, but he tweeted out. I had, I hadn't planned on watching the Lakers, but here I am or, or something like that. Or I had planned on watching uh, the Warriors go for 73, but I can't take my eyes off of, uh, off of this, this being Kobe. And I, I do think this, this helps especially if it's the last thing people see of somebody, right? If let's say, for example, Kobe goes out tonight and he shoots three for 24 and finishes with 14 points or something like that, you know, that, uh, that is the nail in the coffin for those people. But I think for, for, you know, those who were hoping to hate Kobe at the end of this game, uh, you see him drop 60 in, in this performance and a win you know, that he pretty much single-handedly got the Lakers back into it with. Uh, I do think there's a little bit... 13-0 run by himself <laughs> at age 37 while, he, <laughs> while we for the, uh, for the second half of that. Like, visibly, Stu, Stu Lance was talking about it on air the, the whole time. You know, like, trying to catch his breath and still leading the Lakers back. And, like, that's not to overstate it. This is against the Jazz team that, while they clearly wanted to win the game, weren't at their best. So it's not like he won a title, and he'd freely admit that. But it was a, it was an insane performance, given the circumstances. And honestly, all the, the hoopla surrounding it made it even tougher. Yeah, can you imagine having the This Is Your Life montage for, like, 25 minutes, and they're like, okay, go play a normal <laughs> basketball game. 
the first quarter just looked totally weird for everybody. Like, Kobe's out there getting buckets. I think he had, like, 15 points in the first quarter. But everybody else was just, like, looking around like, are we supposed to play? Or is this, like, a retirement ceremony? Or what's what's going on? I'm not really sure how, right now. How long did it take the Lakers to score in that first quarter? I don't remember. You the know, it's quarter, a, it took – the first quarter is a blur. Right. It, it took quite a while. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I, I do think this goes – it doesn't go a very long way. I think people who hate Kobe are going to hate him regardless, just like you're talking about. But I think some of the people who were on the fence, you know, or even perhaps leaning towards not liking Kobe kind of got nudged back in the other direction tonight. This was this was as good – like this is – you know, there's – Okay, there's going supporting your the, argument – Jalen mm-hmm. Rose just tweeted 60 in his final game, 81 on me in his prime, incredible, insane discipline. Congratulations at Kobe Bryant. <laughs> so now like my thing is, is he just is this a test? Is he gonna block everyone that retweets that? Because <laughs> it has 651 already. So ESP- ESPN retweets it <laughs> and he blocks ESPN. He quits. <laughs> I know you guys hated me. Guys, I was uh, complaining. I wasn't complimenting him. <laughs> Gordon Hayward, I know what you mean. He was shoving off on me that whole game. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. But, I, yeah, I, it's it's one of those nights that I think will go down as one of the best nights, you know, best regular season nights ever. And it's simply because of this guy. It's just, I mean, how many, like, how can you have, uh, like, a more memorable finale to a lot, a team that had 15 wins this season? 16 wins? 15? 16? What they finish? I lost with? track. Well, once they were locked into number two, I lost track. 17. Okay, good job, Lakers. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, it's just, uh, we're, I'm at a loss for words. I, I, it, tonight was just incredible. All right, I think it's probably best if we if we cut out while we're ahead, <laughs> if we can call us ever that that we're ever ahead. Uh, we were going to talk about some other peripheral stuff about the Lakers, but we have a whole off season to talk about that tonight. Uh, is just about you know the the culmination of one of the most incredible careers the NBA will ever seen, and <clears throat> of course it culminating in one of the in the most incredible incredible fashion any career has ever ended. I think I'm I think I'm I'm safe to say that. Yeah, I I think so it, he it, he's the oldest player to score 50 points since MJ and he's the oldest player ever with 60. <laughs> I mean that's that that's the most Kobe Bryant record of all time. Yep. Yeah. Only well, way that's been and- better is if he broke that stupid tie with Danielle Marshall. <laughs> he was trying. I think he shot 23s. Yeah. <laughs> he shot, uh, yeah, 21 three-pointers tonight. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, this was fun. Uh, tonight was a lot of fun. Uh, I appreciate it. We have we have a, a good number of viewers out right now. I, re- I really appreciate the viewership. I do want to say I want to send a shout-out because this is the end of the season. I do want to say thank you for everybody who watched this season, who listened on iTunes. I want to thank all of our guests. You can go on down the line of all the Lakers Lounge guests and all the all the Lakers late night guests. This has been great. This is the inaugural season uh, with hopefully many more to come at Silver Screen and Rolls uh, uh, podcast. Uh, Drew Garrison doing work behind the scenes. Harrison, you being uh, you being on the show nightly. Uh, basically, this has been uh, a lot of fun. I hope we made what was otherwise a very frustrating season just a little bit better on everybody. Uh, so thank you, everybody, uh, for for, stick, for sticking with us. And real quick, la- last sorry, last shout out before we leave here. But speaking of making things better and silver screen and roll, if for some reason you are not following the silver screen and roll account and you have not retweeted our tweet offering up a Kobe jersey. They go to the account, scroll down, there's instructions. It, all you have to do is follow Silver Screen and Roll, retweet the tweet, and you have a chance to win. I'll actually uh, I'll hold it up since uh, I got it right here. 
a uh, the number eight jersey. Can you see it a little bit? Yep, kinda. Mm -hmm. That uh, they gave away at one of the games earlier this season, and so you have a chance to win that jersey if you follow us and retweet the tweet. So uh, shameless plug there. But hey, it's for it's for your guys' benefit. I don't get anything out of it. <laughs> so yeah, do is been... retweet. That's that, that's easy. It's been it's been a a crazy year. It's been a crazy run. Uh, Lakers late night has done in in a pretty abysmal season. Lakers late night has done really well. I can't wait to see what the Facebook stuff does with it. So, you know, whenever you and I can get together in the same room for games, that'll be interesting to see how 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 that uh, evolves in in this platform. But um, yeah, big ups to everybody who's who's followed us throughout the year. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.